Two more migrant buses, meanwhile, arrived in D.C. overnight from Del Rio and Eagle Pass, Texas, carrying nearly 60 migrants per bus. Leaders of blue cities are blaming, they, claiming that they're overwhelmed by an influx of illegal migrants, and they're blaming uh, Governor Abbott. Uh, D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser recently calling for the National Guard to step up to help with the surge. Meanwhile, over 1.7 million illegal migrants have been encountered at the southern border so far this year. Joining me right now, live from McCallum, in Texas here uh, is National Border Patrol Council President Brandon Judd. Brandon, it's great to see you this morning. It's good to be with you. And, and you. you really have taken us through this massive crisis uh, firsthand over the last year and a half. Has anything changed since the first time we met a year and a half, two years ago? No, unfortunately not. There's been no new policies, no new programs, no new operations. Nothing has been done by this administration. We would have thought that we would have hit a ceiling um, several months ago, but this administration continues to hold the course, continues to pander to act and that's all that they're doing, unfortunately. A lot, a lot of these uh, elections that we just went through yep. have everything to do with the border. And we're going to talk with Maida Flores later on. She obviously turned over a seat that was Democrat for 100 years. Are people in Texas speaking out? Because this is their home. This is their backyard. They are. They're speaking out everywhere. In fact, I just got back from Atlanta, Georgia, with Herschel Walker. And even there, this is a big issue. From around the nation, this is a huge issue. We're, we're now seeing what's going on in D.C., Washington, D.C. We're, we're hearing the mayor of, of New York City himself saying that he's tired of seeing everything that's coming across. So there's a lot of people that are stepping up and saying that this is wrong. But the Biden administration, they're not doing anything about it. It, it seems like they're just throwing everybody to the wolves. Isn't it? incredible that uh, Muriel Bowser wants the National Guard. Eric Adams wants federal money. I mean, Texas is not getting any money, right? You've got Operation Lone Star happening because of state funding, yep. not federal funny, funding. Yeah, that's simply, you and I both know the reason why. This is a red state. Yeah, um, So the, right. the federal government, um, you know, President Biden's not going to step up and do what's right for, for a red state. You know, you look at what's going on in Arizona right now. It's all smoke and mirrors. Um, they're saying that they're going to fill in the gaps in the wall. That doesn't do anything for asylum seekers. That doesn't stop them. The walls stop people that are trying to evade apprehension. The walls stop the drugs from coming in. But those gaps don't stop the asylum seekers. And that's the problem. This is all about policy. And President Biden will not give us policy. Unbelievable. I spoke with the Texas Department of Public Safety's Lieutenant Christopher Oliveras moments ago, and he, he talked to us about the uh, Texas DPS warehouse uh, and gave us a firsthand look at all of the drugs that are there. Tell me about the drug trade. What's worse, in your view? Is it the human, tra in, in terms of the challenges you and your team face, mm -hmm. is it the human, tra uh, human trafficking or the drug trafficking? For immediate deaths here in the United States, it's the drug trafficking. But you have to remember that they're, they're tied together. The cartels, they recognize that all they have to do is overwhelm our resources and get the drugs in. The, the drugs, the amount of drugs that are on the streets today, it corresponds with the human trafficking. When you see human trafficking going up, like what we're seeing right now, you can, you can expect the drugs to go up as well because the cartels recognize that that's all they have to do to get their products into the United States, and that's what's killing so many of our citizens. So what about the wall in Arizona that you just mentioned? Because the Biden administration is now talking about uh, announcing plans to close gaps near Yuma. And I know we spoke a, a year ago when you told me that the gotaways are going into Arizona, in particular Tucson. Uh, President Biden said on the campaign trail in August 2020 that his administration would not construct another foot of border wall, and yet now he says he's going to close some gaps. You say it doesn't matter anyway. No, right now it doesn't. I mean, it's going to, we'll take every single foot of wall that we can get, but right now what, what we're seeing in Yuma, Arizona, it's, it's all about get, um, give ups, the asylum seekers. And the walls don't do, again, the walls don't do anything for the asylum seekers. What that does is it stops the drugs and um, the, the people that are getting away. But right now in Yuma, no drugs are coming in in that particular area. This is all about politics. This is giving Mark Kelly cover because they know that this issue alone in the state of Arizona could potentially get him to lose the race, uh, the, the general election. Yeah, and up. he didn't say anything about this for years. And suddenly in the last few months, he's all of a sudden talking about the concerns around the wide open border. You, you know, it's unfortunate that he'll put politics ahead of human life here in the United States. All the drugs that have come in over the last 
last year and a half, the 100,000 deaths that we had in 2021, and we're on pace to beat that record in 22, yet he doesn't say anything. Now it comes to politics. Now it comes to a, uh, an incumbent Democrat who could potentially lose the election. Now he's going to do something? Unbelievable. That's politics. When, you, when your team uh, sees the massive drugs that are coming through, how long does it take for those drugs to get to Atlanta, New York, Chicago. It's almost immediate. Once they immediate. get them in, into the United States, they have to distribute them as quickly as they possibly can. Because the longer that they sit in one place, the better chance they're going to be detected. The, the better chance that the intel is going to say, that's where the stash house is, that's where you need to go. So the moment they get them into the United States, they distribute it throughout throughout our country. Wow. Everywhere. Wow. Just, just incredible. Just wow. Brandon, it's great to talk with you. Thank Thanks you, Thanks very much for the update. We appreciate it. Brandon. And Judge joining us here.